Mind Uploading, Wikipedia Article Audio Whole Brain Emulation, Mind Upload or Brain Upload is the hypothetical futuristic process of scanning mental state of a particular brain substrate and copying it to a computer. The computer could then run a simulation model of the brain's information processing, such that it responds in essentially the same way as the original brain and experiences having a conscious mind. Overview Theoretical Benefits and Applications Immortality or Backup a Uploaded Astronaut Relevant Technologies and Techniques Computational complexity Simulation model scale Scanning and mapping scale of an individual Serial sectioning Brain imaging Brain simulation Issues Philosophical issues Ethical and legal implications Political and economic implications Emulation timelines and AI risk Advocates Skeptics Mind uploading may potentially be accomplished by either of two methods, copy and transfer or gradual replacement of neurons. In the case of the former method, Mind uploading would be achieved by scanning and mapping the salient features of a biological brain, and then by copying, transferring, and storing that information state into a computer system or another computational device. The simulated mind could be within a virtual reality or simulated world, supported by an anatomic 3D body simulation model. Alternatively the simulated mind could reside in a computer that is inside a robot or a biological body in real life. Among some futurists and within the transhumanist movement, mind uploading is treated as an important proposed life extension technology. Some believe mind uploading is humanity's current best option for preserving the identity of the species, as opposed to cryonics. Another aim of mind uploading is to provide a permanent backup to our mind file, and a means for functional copies of human minds to survive a global disaster or interstellar space travels. Whole brain emulation is discussed by some futurists as a logical endpoint of the topical computational neuroscience and neuroinformatics fields, both about brain simulation for medical research purposes. It is discussed in artificial intelligence research publications as an approach to strong AI. Computer-based intelligence such as an upload could think much faster than a biological human even if it were no more intelligent. A large-scale society of uploads might, according to futurists, give rise to a technological singularity meaning a sudden time constant decrease in the exponential development of technology. Mind uploading is a central conceptual feature of numerous science fiction novels and films. Substantial mainstream research in related areas is being conducted in animal brain mapping and simulation, development of faster supercomputers, virtual reality, brain-computer interfaces, connectomics, and information extraction from dynamically functioning brains. According to supporters, many of the tools and ideas needed to achieve mind uploading already exist or are currently under active development, however, they will admit that others are, as yet, very speculative, but still in the realm of engineering possibility. Neuroscientist Randall Koene has formed a non-profit organization called Carbon Copies to promote mind uploading research. The human brain contains, on average, about 86 billion nerve cells called neurons, each individually linked to other neurons by way of connectors called axons and dendrites. Signals at the junctures of these connections are transmitted by the release and detection of chemicals known as neurotransmitters. 
The established neuroscientific consensus is that the human mind is largely an emergent property of the information processing of this neural network. Neuroscientists have stated that important functions performed by the mind, such as learning, memory, and consciousness, are due to purely physical and electrochemical processes in the brain and are governed by applicable laws. For example, Christoph Cook and Giulio Tonini wrote in IEEE Spectrum. Consciousness is part of the natural world. It depends, we believe, only on mathematics and logic and on the imperfectly known laws of physics, chemistry, and biology, it does not arise from some magical or otherworldly quality. The concept of mind uploading is based on this mechanistic view of the mind, and denies the vitalist view of human life and consciousness. Eminent computer scientists and neuroscientists have predicted that specially programmed computers will be capable of thought and even attain consciousness, including Cook and Tonini, Douglas Hofstadter, Jeff Hawkins, Marvin Minsky, Randall A. Koene, and Rodolfo Linas. Such an artificial intelligence capability might provide a computational substrate necessary for uploading. However, even though uploading is dependent upon such a general capability, it is conceptually distinct from general forms of AI in that it results from dynamic reanimation of information derived from a specific human mind so that the mind retains a sense of historical identity. The transferred and reanimated information would become a form of artificial intelligence, sometimes called an infomorph or newmorph. Many theorists have presented models of the brain and have established a range of estimates of the amount of computing power needed for partial and complete simulations. Using these models, some have estimated that uploading may become possible within decades if trends such as Moore's law continue. In theory, if the information and processes of the mind can be disassociated from the biological body, they are no longer tied to the individual limits and lifespan of that body. Furthermore, information within a brain could be partly or wholly copied or transferred to one or more other substrates, thereby from a purely mechanistic perspective reducing or eliminating mortality risk of such information. This general proposal was discussed in 1971 by biogerontologist George M. Martin of the University of Washington. An uploaded astronaut would be the application of mind uploading to human spaceflight. This would eliminate the harms caused by a zero-gravity environment, the vacuum of space, and cosmic radiation to the human body. It would allow for the use of smaller spacecraft, such as the proposed Starship, and it would enable virtually unlimited interstellar travel distances. The focus of mind uploading, in the case of copy and transfer, is on data acquisition, rather than data maintenance of the brain. A set of approaches known as loosely coupled offloading may be used in the attempt to characterize and copy the mental contents of a brain. The LCOL approach may take advantage of self-reports, life logs, and video recordings that can be analyzed by artificial intelligence. A bottom-up approach may focus on the specific resolution and morphology of neurons, the spike times of neurons the times at which neurons produce action potential responses. Advocates of mind uploading point to Moore's law to support the notion that the necessary computing power is expected to become available within a few decades. However, the actual computational requirements for running an uploaded human mind are very difficult to quantify, potentially rendering such an argument specious. Regardless of the techniques used to capture or recreate the function of a human mind, the processing demands are likely to be immense, due to the large number of neurons in the human brain along with the considerable complexity of each neuron. 
In 2004, Henry Markram, lead researcher of the Blue Brain Project, stated that it is not goal to build an intelligent neural network, based solely on the computational demands such a project would have. It will be very difficult because, in the brain, every molecule is a powerful computer and we would need to simulate the structure and function of trillions upon trillions of molecules as well as all the rules that govern how they interact. You would literally need computers that are trillions of times bigger and faster than anything existing today. Five years later, after successful simulation of part of a rat brain, Markram was much more bold and optimistic. In 2009, as director of the Blue Brain Project, he claimed that a detailed, functional artificial human brain can be built within the next 10 years. Required computational capacity strongly depend on the chosen level of simulation model scale. Since the function of the human mind and how it might arise from the working of the brain's neural network, are poorly understood issues, mind uploading relies on the idea of neural network emulation. Rather than having to understand the high-level psychological processes and large-scale structures of the brain, and model them using classical artificial intelligence methods and cognitive psychology models, the low-level structure of the underlying neural network is captured, mapped, and emulated with a computer system. In computer science terminology, rather than analyzing and reverse engineering the behavior of the algorithms and data structures that resides in the brain, a blueprint of its source code is translated to another programming language. The human mind and the personal identity then, theoretically, is generated by the emulated neural network in an identical fashion to it being generated by the biological neural network. On the other hand, a molecule-scale simulation of the brain is not expected to be required, provided that the functioning of the neurons is not affected by quantum mechanical processes. The neural network emulation approach only requires that the functioning and interaction of neurons and synapses are understood. It is expected that it is sufficient with a black box signal processing model of how the neurons respond to nerve impulses. A sufficiently complex and accurate model of the neurons is required. A traditional artificial neural network model, for example multilayer perceptron network model, is not considered as sufficient. A dynamic spiking neural network model is required which reflects that the neuron fires only when a membrane potential reaches a certain level. It is likely that the model must include delays, nonlinear functions and differential equations describing the relation between electrophysical parameters such as electrical currents, voltages, membrane states, and neuromodulators. Since learning and long-term memory are believed to result from strengthening or weakening the synapses via a mechanism known as synaptic plasticity or synaptic adaptation, the model should include this mechanism. The response of sensory receptors to various stimuli must also be modeled. Furthermore, the model may have to include metabolism i.e. how the neurons are affected by hormones and other chemical substances that may cross the blood-brain barrier. It is considered likely that the model must include currently unknown neuromodulators, neurotransmitters, and ion channels. It is considered unlikely that the simulation model has to include protein interaction, which would make it computationally complex. A digital computer simulation model of an analog system such as the brain is an approximation that introduces random quantization errors and distortion. However, the biological neurons also suffer from randomness and limited precision, for example due to background noise. 
The errors of the discrete model can be made smaller than the randomness of the biological brain by choosing a sufficiently high variable resolution and sample rate, and sufficiently accurate models of non-linearities. The computational power and computer memory must however be sufficient to run such large simulations, preferably in real time. When modeling and simulating the brain of a specific individual, a brain map or connectivity database showing the connections between the neurons must be extracted from an anatomic model of the brain. For whole brain simulation, this network map should show the connectivity of the whole nervous system, including the spinal cord, sensory receptors, and muscle cells. Destructive scanning of a small sample of tissue from a mouse brain including synaptic details is possible as of 2010. However, if short-term memory and working memory include prolonged or repeated firing of neurons, as well as intraneural dynamic processes, the electrical and chemical signal state of the synapses and neurons may be hard to extract. The uploaded mind may then perceive a memory loss of the events and mental processes immediately before the time of brain scanning. A full brain map has been estimated to occupy less than 2x1016 bytes and would store the addresses of the connected neurons, the synapse type and the synapse weight for each of the brain's 1015 synapses. However, the biological complexities of true brain function may preclude an accurate prediction of the volume of binary data required to faithfully represent a functioning human mind. If neuroscience is the bottleneck on brain emulation rather than computing power, emulation advances may be more erratic and unpredictable based on when new scientific discoveries happen. Limited computing power would mean the first emulations would run slower and so would be easier to adapt to, and there would be more time for the technology to transition through society, improvements in manufacturing, 3D printing and nanotechnology may accelerate hardware production, which could increase the computing overhang from excess hardware relative to neuroscience. If one AI development group had a lead in emulation technology, it would have more subjective time to win an arms race. To build the first superhuman AI. Because it would be less rushed, it would have more freedom to consider AI risks. Greater investment in brain emulation and associated cognitive science might enhance the ability of artificial intelligence researchers to create neuromorphic algorithms, such as neural networks, reinforcement learning, and hierarchical perception. This could accelerate risks from uncontrolled AI. Participants at a 2011 AI workshop estimated an 85% probability that neuromorphic AI would arrive before brain emulation. This was based on the idea that brain emulation would require understanding some brain components, and it would be easier to tinker with these than to reconstruct the entire brain in its original form. By a very narrow margin, the participants on balance leaned toward the view that accelerating brain emulation would increase expected AI risk, waiting might give society more time to think about the consequences of brain emulation and develop institutions to improve cooperation. A possible method for mind uploading is serial sectioning, in which the brain tissue and perhaps other parts of the nervous system are frozen and then scanned and analyzed layer by layer, which for frozen samples at nanoscale requires a cryo-ultramicrotome, thus capturing the structure of the neurons and their interconnections. The exposed surface of frozen nerve tissue would be scanned and recorded, and then the surface layer of tissue removed. While this would be a very slow and labor-intensive process, research is currently underway to automate the collection and microscopy of serial sections. The scans would then be analyzed, and a model of the neural net recreated in the system that the mind was being uploaded into.
there are uncertainties with this approach using current microscopy techniques. If it is possible to replicate neuron function from its visible structure alone, then the resolution afforded by a scanning electron microscope would suffice for such a technique. However, as the function of brain tissue is partially determined by molecular events, this may not suffice for capturing and simulating neuron functions. It may be possible to extend the techniques of serial sectioning and to capture the internal molecular makeup of neurons, through the use of sophisticated immunohistochemistry staining methods that could then be read via confocal laser scanning microscopy. However, as the physiological genesis of mind is not currently known, this method may not be able to access all of the necessary biochemical information to recreate a human brain with sufficient fidelity. It may be possible to create functional 3D maps of the brain activity, using advanced neuroimaging technology, such as functional MRI, magnetoencephalography, or combinations of multiple methods, to build a detailed three-dimensional model of the brain using non-invasive and non-destructive methods. Today, fMRI is often combined with MEG for creating functional maps of human cortex during more complex cognitive tasks, as the methods complement each other. Even though current imaging technology lacks the spatial resolution needed to gather the information needed for such a scan, important recent and future developments are predicted to substantially improve both spatial and temporal resolutions of existing technologies. There is ongoing work in the field of brain simulation, including partial and whole simulations of some animals. For example, the C. elegans roundworm, Drosophila fruit fly, and mouse have all been simulated to various degrees. The Blue Brain Project by the Brain and Mind Institute of the Ecole Polytechnique Federal de Lausanne Switzerland is an attempt to create a synthetic brain by reverse engineering mammalian brain circuitry. Underlying the concept of mind uploading is the broad philosophy that consciousness lies within the brain's information processing and is in essence an emergent feature that arises from large neural network high-level patterns of organization, and that the same patterns of organization can be realized in other processing devices. Mind uploading also relies on the idea that the human mind, just like non-human minds, is represented by the current neural network paths and the weights of the brain synapses rather than by a dualistic and mystic soul and spirit. The mind or soul can be defined as the information state of the brain, and is immaterial only in the same sense as the information content of a data file or the state of a computer software currently residing in the workspace memory of the computer. Data specifying the information state of the neural network can be captured and copied as a computer file from the brain and re-implemented into a different physical form. This is not to deny that minds are richly adapted to their substrates. An analogy to the idea of mind uploading is to copy the temporary information state of a computer program from the computer memory to another computer and continue its execution. The other computer may perhaps have different hardware architecture but emulates the hardware of the first computer. These issues have a long history. In 1775 Thomas Reed wrote, I would be glad to know, whether when my brain has lost its original structure, and when some hundred years after the same materials are fabricated so curiously as to become an intelligent being, whether, I say that being will be me, or, if, two or three such beings should be formed out of my brain, whether they will all be me, and consequently one and the same intelligent being. A considerable portion of transhumanists and singularitarians place great hope into the belief that they may become immortal, by creating one or many non-biological functional copies of their brains, thereby leaving their biological shell. 
However, the philosopher and transhumanist Susan Schneider claims that at best, uploading would create a copy of the original person's mind. Susan Schneider agrees that consciousness has a computational basis, but this does not mean we can upload and survive. According to her views, uploading would probably result in the death of the original person's brain, while only outside observers can maintain the illusion of the original person still being alive. For it is implausible to think that one's consciousness would leave one's brain and travel to a remote location, ordinary physical objects do not behave this way. Ordinary objects are not simultaneously here, and somewhere else. At best, a copy of the original mind is created. Others have argued against such conclusions. For example, Buddhist transhumanist James Hughes has pointed out that this consideration only goes so far, if one believes the self is an illusion, worries about survival are not reasons to avoid uploading, and Keith Wiley has presented an argument wherein all resulting minds of an uploading procedure are granted equal primacy in their claim to the original identity such that survival of the self is determined retroactively from a strictly subjective position. Another potential consequence of mind uploading is that the decision to upload may then create a mindless symbol manipulator instead of a conscious mind. Are we to assume that an upload is conscious if it displays behaviors that are highly indicative of consciousness? Are we to assume that an upload is conscious if it verbally insists that it is conscious? Could there be an absolute upper limit in processing speed above which consciousness cannot be sustained? The mystery of consciousness precludes a definitive answer to this question. Numerous scientists, including Kurzweil, strongly believe that determining whether a separate entity is conscious is fundamentally unknowable since consciousness is inherently subjective. Regardless, some scientists strongly believe consciousness is the consequence of computational processes which are substrate neutral. On the contrary, numerous scientists believe consciousness may be the result of some form of quantum computation dependent on substrate. In light of uncertainty on whether to regard uploads as conscious, Sandberg proposes a cautious approach. Principle of assuming the most, assume that any emulated system could have the same mental properties as the original system and treat it correspondingly. It is argued that if a computational copy of one's mind did exist, it would be impossible for one to recognize it as their own mind. The argument for this stance is the following. For a computational mind to recognize an emulation of itself, it must be capable of deciding whether two Turing machines are functionally equivalent. This task is uncomputable due to the undecidability of equivalence, thus there cannot exist a computational procedure in the mind that is capable of recognizing an emulation of itself. The process of developing emulation technology raises ethical issues related to animal welfare and artificial consciousness. The neuroscience required to develop brain emulation would require animal experimentation, first on invertebrates and then on small mammals before moving on to humans. Sometimes the animals would just need to be euthanized in order to extract, slice, and scan their brains but sometimes behavioral and in vivo measures would be required, which might cause pain to living animals. In addition, the resulting animal emulations themselves might suffer, depending on one's views about consciousness. Bancroft argues for the plausibility of consciousness in brain simulations on the basis of the fading qualia thought experiment of David Chalmers. He then concludes, if, as I argue above, a sufficiently detailed computational simulation of the brain is potentially operationally equivalent to an organic brain, 
it follows that we must consider extending protections against suffering to simulations. It might help reduce emulation suffering to develop virtual equivalents of anesthesia, as well as to omit processing related to pain and slash or consciousness. However, some experiments might require a fully functioning and suffering animal emulation. Animals might also suffer by accident due to flaws and lack of insight into what parts of their brains are suffering. Questions also arise regarding the moral status of partial brain emulations, as well as creating neuromorphic emulations that draw inspiration from biological brains but are built somewhat differently. Brain emulations could be erased by computer viruses or malware without need to destroy the underlying hardware. This may make assassination easier than for physical humans. The attacker might take the computing power for its own use. Many questions arise regarding the legal personhood of emulations. Would they be given the rights of biological humans? If a person makes an emulated copy of himself and then dies, does the emulation inherit his property and official positions? Could the emulation ask to pull the plug when its biological version was terminally ill or in a coma? Would it help to treat emulations as adolescents for a few years so that the biological creator would maintain temporary control? Would criminal emulations receive the death penalty? or would they be given forced data modification as a form of rehabilitation? Could an upload have marriage and child care rights? If simulated minds would come true and if they were assigned rights of their own, it may be difficult to ensure the protection of digital human rights. For example, social science researchers might be tempted to secretly expose simulated minds or whole isolated societies of simulated minds, to controlled experiments in which many copies of the same minds are exposed to different test conditions. Emulations could create a number of conditions that might increase risk of war, including inequality, changes of power dynamics, a possible technological arms race to build emulations first, first strike advantages, strong loyalty and willingness to die among emulations, and triggers for racist, xenophobic, and religious prejudice. If emulations run much faster than humans, there might not be enough time for human leaders to make wise decisions or negotiate. It is possible that humans would react violently against growing power of emulations, especially if they depress human wages. Emulations may not trust each other, and even well-intentioned defensive measures might be interpreted as offense. There are very few feasible technologies that humans have refrained from developing. The neuroscience and computer hardware technologies that may make brain emulation possible are widely desired for other reasons, and logically their development will continue into the future. Assuming that emulation technology will arrive, a question becomes whether we should accelerate or slow its advance. Arguments for speeding up brain emulation research Arguments for slowing down brain emulation research Emulation research would also speed up neuroscience as a whole which might accelerate medical advances, cognitive enhancement, lie detectors, and capability for psychological manipulation. Emulations might be easier to control than de novo AI because As counterpoint to these considerations, Bostrom notes some downsides. Ray Kurzweil, Director of Engineering at Google claims to know and foresee that people will be able to upload their entire brains to computers and become digitally immortal by 2045. Kurzweil made this claim for many years, e.g. during his speech in 2013 at the Global Futures 2045 International Congress in New York, which claims to subscribe to a similar set of beliefs. 
Mind uploading is also advocated by a number of researchers in neuroscience and artificial intelligence, such as Marvin Minsky while he was still alive. In 1993, Joe Strout created a small website called the Mind Uploading Homepage, and began advocating the idea in cryonics circles and elsewhere on the net. That site has not been actively updated in recent years, but it has spawned other sites including MindUploading.org, run by Randall A. Koene, who also moderates a mailing list on the topic. These advocates see mind uploading as a medical procedure which could eventually save countless lives. Many transhumanists look forward to the development and deployment of mind uploading technology, with transhumanists such as Nick Bostrom predicting that it will become possible within the 21st century due to technological trends such as Moore's Law. Michio Kaku, in collaboration with Science, hosted a documentary, Sci Fi Science Physics of the Impossible based on his book Physics of the Impossible. Episode 4, titled How to Teleport, mentions that mind uploading via techniques such as quantum entanglement and whole brain emulation using an advanced MRI machine may enable people to be transported to vast distances at near light speed. The book Beyond Humanity Cyber Evolution and Future Minds by Gregory S. Paul and Earl D. Cox, is about the eventual evolution of computers into sentient beings, but also deals with human mind transfer. Richard Doyle S. Wetware's Experiments in Post-Vital Living deals extensively with uploading from the perspective of distributed embodiment, arguing for example that humans are currently part of the artificial life phenotype. Doyle's vision reverses the polarity on uploading, with artificial life forms such as uploads actively seeking out biological embodiment as part of their reproductive strategy. Kenneth D. Miller, a professor of neuroscience at Columbia and a CEO director of the Center for Theoretical Neuroscience, raised doubts about the practicality of mind uploading. His major argument is that reconstructing neurons and their connections is in itself a formidable task, but it is far from being sufficient. Operation of brain depends on the dynamics of electrical and biochemical signal exchange between neurons. Therefore capturing them in a single frozen state may prove insufficient. In addition, the nature of these signals may require modeling down to molecular level and beyond. Therefore, while not rejecting the idea in principle, Miller believes that the complexity of the absolute duplication of an individual mind is insurmountable for the nearest hundreds of years.